story one. I realize that I am working, paying bills and groceries, and spending little time with friends and family on special occasions. This is such a loop, and I will probably do it until I'm very old to enjoy life. Story two, money. How much everything costs. How it never feels like there is enough. My savings account balance. How expensive it is to raise children. How much I will need to retire. All the mental health hurdles I need to continuously overcome to keep making money. All the ways I mentally beat myself up for spending anything that is not necessary. The sinking feeling I get any time I purchase anything or pay a bill. Story 3. The main thing that makes me feel unhappy is the lack of time spent around other humans I enjoy spending time with. Not even entirely because I don't know other humans to spend time with, but moving into my 30s, it becomes so easy for us all to spend our free time in our own little bubbles of self-applied comforts and entertainment. I feel like a big part of the foundation for happiness for any human being is having a sense of community, a tribe to call your own. Story 4. I don't have a life, just survival. I was born to the wrong parents and from there just set up for failure. I have had suicidal thoughts for at least 15 years by now, and I'm 27. I have never experienced love or happiness. I don't even really know what either is. I never had any friends or other relationships. I just learned to fear and hide from people. I wasn't even able to build much of a personality of my own, just coping mechanisms and survival strategies stacked on top of each other. Every time I even approach something remotely connected to happiness, there is just too much pain around it to allow it. The only reason I'm even sticking around is my siblings, the only people I ever felt some connection and positive feelings towards. But even they cannot make me happy, even if I should be in their presence. And I hate myself for that. So the main reason is that my life is just pure pain and suffering, and I didn't even have a chance to mess it up myself, which is so unfair. Story 5 Life is just working, working, and more work. Paying bills, suffering chronic pain and health issues, having to interact with people, work, commute, having to work for everything all the time, and then work even more, paying bills. Sleeping a little uncomfortably, work, commute, paying bills, work again, chores, social interactions, work, bad sleep, nightmares, chronic pain, more work, commute, paying bills, nightmares, work, 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 work. Story 6. Childhood domestic violence, my brother overdosed in March. I have four autoimmune diseases. I am writing this from my hospital bed, and I am infertile. That's the bad part, though. My life is so full of amazing things, but I just feel like since my brother's death, all the bad parts feel even bigger than they did before. Story 7. My husband's father died two years ago of a condition that mimics Parkinson's. Now he's starting to have the same symptoms. The projection is that we'll have 8 to 10 years of this progressing with the same outcome. If I speak too softly, I'm mumbling just to annoy him. If I speak louder, I'm shouting. I move things and hide things from him. Please know that I don't, it's a part of it. Then there are extraordinary monologues that go for half an hour. If I say anything or interject, I'm interrupting him on purpose. We might have the same conversation 10 times a day, for example. Does the dog eat American cheese as a treat? No, he hates it. One time we finished dinner, and as I was clearing the table, he said, That smells good. When are we eating? Um, we ate five minutes ago, sweetheart. I'm tired. Sorry to vent, but I'm overwhelmed. Story 8. Still paying student loans almost 24 years after my graduation. When I was 17, Everyone made sure to tell me student loan debt is good and I would be able to pay them off in 5 to 10 years. Still here, paying for them. Story 9. The basic feeling of never really feeling secure and supported. Didn't have a great upbringing, so never felt really safe. I'm always on high alert, thinking worst-case scenarios and having to plan. Because if things go wrong, nobody will be there with love and compassion to actually catch me. No contact with my mother. And even though I know my dad loves me, I know he doesn't want to be that involved. I know that he would help me in an emergency, but then it would really need to be an emergency. Like I asked him if I could live with him for a little bit while I looked for an apartment, and he didn't really want to say. He would let me if I were homeless, but he doesn't really want to. So I never have a home to return to. I never have a family who would sacrifice for me as many others do. 
it makes me feel less valuable and very lonely. It's no fun being strong and independent when you were forced into that position. Story 10. Crippled by mental health issues that should have been diagnosed 30 years ago, and I'm only just getting help with despite searching and being sent here, there, and everywhere since I was 16. Story 11. I feel like I'm so far behind everyone. I'm barely making bills. I don't date. I am just not doing anything I enjoy. And what I can enjoy is invaded by my anxiety over everything else. Story 12. Being trapped in Mississippi. I hate it here. There are no jobs. The pay is terrible. Everything is terrible here, even the towns. Everyone is on drugs or old and racist. I can't just leave due to my children's needs, but I cannot express to you how miserable and unhappy I am. Story 13. I am autistic and have attention deficit slash hyperactivity disorder. It's like the entire world was made to be either scary, boring, immoral, obtuse, or hostile to me. I've never felt like I fit in. I've never felt like my priorities were correct or even good for you. I'm constantly torn on whether or not I'm seeing through the nonsense that people call normal or if I'm missing out because I'm just wired wrong. I'm not asexual, yet I don't pursue romance because it feels lost in translation to me. It's like other people just know how to get a partner, but I was never given the leaflet. So I'm in this state of semi-self-imposed isolation, and yet I still kind of yearn for a soulmate. It's like my plan is one day she'll find me, similar to how my only long-term plans are one day, I'll die. It's like the attention deficit slash hyperactivity disorder constantly keeps me trapped in the now, always chasing dopamine and never once thinking about goals or the future. But the autism keeps me alienated, awkward, and accidentally off-putting to other people. Story 14. I am working over 55 hours per week, roughly 7.30 to 5.30, sometimes with overtime as well. Still, I am not making enough to really do anything. I have absolutely no time for myself during the week. By the time I get out, I am exhausted and just want to go to bed. It is the same on the weekends. I am just exhausted. I feel like I am stuck doing the same thing every day for my job and for what? I do not even make enough to go on vacations or to get my own place. Story 15. I took care of my girlfriend during her cancer. She was diagnosed two years into our relationship. Everyone said I didn't need to do it and could walk away. But I decided to tough it out because I truly loved her. A couple of months into remission, she started having an affair with a guy we both knew. Rather than tell me and be honest, she gaslighted me and treated me poorly for months, telling me I never did enough for her during her cancer while I had dropped my entire life for her. When I finally figured it out, she dumped me and claimed I was the problem and was never good to her. She emotionally abused and manipulated me throughout the entire breakup. I'm feeling really down. Story 16. The harder I try to lose weight, the bigger my self-sabotage. I've lost the weight before, but now it's like when I cut calories and push myself in the gym, my body wants more and more food. I feel like a hamster on a wheel. Story 17. Being overweight. I am making progress in my weight loss, but boy, does it take a long time. I see photos of myself and want to hide in a cave. I feel like my life cannot begin, or that I am not worthy of love, success, and friendship unless I'm a healthy weight. Story 18, my mental health, social life, and just being a human. Honestly, it just kind of sucks how fragile the body is and how, as a part of society, you're never truly free. Story 19, because I do not see a meaning, I lost it this year. I do not like anything, I do not enjoy anything anymore, and I am a failure. I just do not know why I was put on this earth, and I am having trouble just getting out of bed in the morning. Sometimes I am just sure I am going to be dead before I reach my 30s. I just cannot do this thing for another 20, 30, or even 40 years. I do not see myself living. Story 20. I wouldn't say I am unhappy, but I definitely have a dark cloud in my life, and that dark cloud is my mother. She is a narcissist, and I don't have it in me to let her be alone. I have ways of managing her. She doesn't abuse or ridicule me the way she used to because I took a stance for myself. I won't tolerate the disrespect. Other than that, I have an amazing life. So amazing that I feel like I don't deserve it, but that's my negative self-talk. I'm working on that. Story 21. 
I think the main reason for my unhappiness, and I'm sure for many other people, is knowing what I have to do and knowing exactly how to do it, but still not doing it. Kills me from the inside, but at the same time, I know and I realize that it's all on me. Story 22. I have got a few different chronic health issues that will never go away. The pain may reduce occasionally, but it will always come back. I have had surgery and will definitely need more. Knowing at a young age that it will always be there to some degree is pretty disheartening. Story 23. Depression, loneliness. Being with someone yet still feeling alone. No friends to hang around. Always being broke. The expectations put on you as the oldest, it sucks. Story 24. No matter what I do, I'm not attractive enough. I can be the funniest, sweetest, and most supportive guy alive, and it means nothing. I'm not saying I am, because I definitely am not any of those, but I try to be, and the simple fact that literally every single one of my friends does not struggle to find someone and is actively flirted with kills my self esteem. I know I'm below average in looks, but as I'm getting older, I realize more and more how shallow people are. Men, women, whatever, people base their first impressions on dating solely on how you look. And the ones that don't have someone. Story 25. Debt. I was raised by parents who did not graduate college, and so they thought the most important thing was to get me into college. Now I look at the debt I am in and my lack of job options, and I just think about how much money I could have saved if I had not gone to college. I could have bought a house in cash. Story 26. Unable to get myself together and get things done. I grieve for the person I was before my mental illness became a constant thing to deal with. I'm grateful that I don't have symptoms as strong as those my late grandma did, but I can't help but wonder how I got to this place in life. Story 27. I don't have any friends. I am really open and invite people out, never say no to invitations, and it just doesn't happen for me. I wish people told me what is wrong with me so I could start working on it, but obviously nobody will. I am used to going out on my own, but it's just so much better to share experiences with others. Story 28. I'm trying to get my mental health under control, and part of that is putting myself back out in the world. But the world isn't a nice place. I've done a lot of work on myself over the last two years, and it's made me realize so many people need to work on themselves. Story 29. I'm happy with my life, but my country is in war. Every day, hundreds of innocent civilians are being killed, and others are being burned alive. No news channel talks about it. No one knows what's truly happening other than the people living here. The media lies. They hide everything. Story 30. I am not doing anything that I want to do. I am caged between my bed and work. It should be as easy as getting dressed and going outside. But what then? There are no friends or family to go out with or do anything with. My boyfriend would rather stay in the dark playing video games. Story 31. Failure to be a successful adult. Being a disappointment. A lot of mental health issues. Grief. Loneliness. Toxic family whom I have to live with. Dysfunctional relationship with food. Wasted over 20 years of my life lost in drug addiction. Shame. Regret. Self-loathing. Pick your poison. Story 32. There are two. One. I am not good at literally anything that would translate into a marketable job skill. Two, I cannot relate to other people at all. I just turned 39, and I have zero friends and have never even been in a romantic relationship. Story 33, completely out of control. My home, my body, my relationships. Everything is a mess, and I feel like I am trapped in that cycle. I also have anxiety, depression, and severe attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, and I have to pick and choose which to treat. Story 34. I am happy with my life for the most part, but with every day that passes, I realize how much I hate working. I could be doing so much more with my life if I had more time. I am lucky to have a husband in a lucrative field, so I may not always need to work, but at the same time, I do not want to be financially dependent on someone else. We need another labor movement because 40 hours a week is not humane in my opinion. Story 35. I don't have the willpower or drive to truly take care of myself. I've made huge strides and big changes in the last year, 
but I need to kick addictions if I'm ever going to be healthy enough to live the life I want. Story 36. COVID nearly made me blind and still could. I am also now housebound and bedridden. I had a life and perfect health before, God damn it. This is not just a cold. Story 37. Being trapped in my hometown, I have always seen it as a dying town with little to no opportunities. The only jobs available are at a mediocre Walmart or a subpar factory. I have never liked the people around here because they are either a drug addict or a methamphetamine user. I told myself as a teenager that I wouldn't be trapped in this place. But here I am in my house raising my family. The cherry on top. My neighbor is a known cocaine dealer and methamphetamine user, so I have to deal with all his suspicious people as well. I just thought I would have done better for myself and my family. I feel like I have failed as a father and husband somewhere along the line. I don't want my children growing up around here. Story 38 After kids, my wife developed postpartum psychosis. If you've never been around that, it is terrifying. She is a proud woman and didn't want medical help. It took an evening with freshly fallen snow to prove that what she experienced was a hallucination. She finally started getting help, but there's some chronic lingering depression that has robbed her of the joyful aspects of parenting. She is not the reason for my unhappiness, but the fact that I am powerless to help her weighs heavily on me. To add to my dilemma, if she'd never met me, she wouldn't have ever had kids. I was the only man she'd met who she felt was worthy of kids. So I live with the knowledge that this depression wouldn't have come to her if she never met me. Yet there's nothing that can be done to undo the postpartum depression or postpartum psychosis. She has to live with it, and I have to live knowing I will never be able to bring true happiness to her life. I feel like a failed husband.